uh, helpful to you. Okay guys, in this portion of the tip, we'll be making an automator workflow to execute at the end of the Chronosync synchronization of the two iTunes folders on the two different Macs. When you make the automator workflow, what's going to happen here is that the automator will look at the files in the iTunes folder on your hard drive and then any files that are newly updated or copied today will be added to the iTunes library therefore updating the library pane in the iTunes program itself. So how do we go about doing that? Well, the easiest way I've found is to make a workflow application which you can basically just put right next to your uh, Chronosync document or Chronosync file and you know just keep them together and um, it will act as its own application and it will execute um, at the end of the Chronosync. So we start an automator and we're going to make a new workflow. We're going to choose custom here and we're going to hit choose. Okay. So basically the first thing we want to do is we I like to get confirmation dialogues to show that the steps are happening in the way that I want them to. So there is a confirmation dialog box that you can customize the wording any way you want. So I'm going to look for ask for confirmation and you see that's the top one here. We'll drag this over and here we're given a main message and then something to type. So I'm going to put down update music index for i for iTunes question mark and then we'll put down this action will scan for new files slash folders in your iTunes directory comma and then update your library in iTunes accordingly. So Basically, this is going to be a little box that pops up at the end of our Chronosync, and it's going to ask us, do we want to update the music index? Okay, And basically, this is exactly what we're doing. We're scanning for new files or folders in the iTunes directory on your hard drive, and then we're updating the library. So when you hit OK, the next step is to open iTunes. So if we go to Launch, Application, we can drag this over and simply pick to launch iTunes. After that, we are going to want to find the new files that have been updated after the sync. So we will go to Find Finder Items, and we will drag that over here. And where are they? Well, we know they're in our iTunes MP3 folder. So we'll go to Other, and I will f navigate to the music folder, iTunes iTunes Music, open. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We want to look for finder items in the iTunes Music folder whose extension ends with or contains either one, MP3. So now we're only going to update and we're going to make sure we're only going to update MP3. Now, if we scroll to the right here, we can hit a plus and add a second argument. And what this is going to say is, look for an extension with MP3 where the date modified is today. So it will not go through your whole music index all over again and re-index every folder. Because if you have a thousand albums in your MP3 folder, that can take a while. You only want to do the ones that were updated with the sync. That will be today. So after we find these items, what do we want to do with them? Well, we want to import them into the iTunes library. There is an import command. If you just type in import, we're going to import files, not import audio. There, Import files into iTunes. There we go. So we want to import files into iTunes into the existing playlist named library. That's just a fancy way of saying the library section of your iTunes application. After that, we'll want to quit iTunes. And we can hit quit application, drag this over. Go to quit iTunes. So, really quickly, 
Update the music index for iTunes. This action will scan for new files or folders in your iTunes directory and then update your library. If I hit OK, it will launch iTunes. It will then look for the iTunes music folder. It will look for any, any uh, file with the MP3 extension that has been modified or technically added, same thing, today. It will therefore import these files into the iTunes library and then quit iTunes. Now, two things you can do when we save. You can save this workflow to edit or change later. Like for example, if you don't want this confirmation box to go in there, you don't really need that. In fact, if you want this to go kind of run when you're not even around, you want to take this away because this is requiring user input. You have to hit OK or this thing isn't going to happen. So if you take this out, you can automatically launch iTunes, find the folders, do that, quit, and you're done. So you can save it as a workflow. So I want to save. If you save it as a workflow, I'm going to save these things to my desktop right now. If you save them as a workflow, you can come back and work on it later. I'm going to call this iTunes uh, Update. We're going to call it a workflow. Now, if we want to make it an application, this is what I really want to use at the end of the Chronosync. And we're going to want to make this run. So I'm going to save it as an application for now. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I know it's a little bit drawn out and it's a, about an 18 to 19 minute movie file, um, but it really goes over a lot of cool things. It really gets you uh, an introduction to file sharing, an introduction to syncing, and an introduction to Automator all in one tutorial. Um, this is my first time doing this, so please go easy on the comments. Uh, if you have anything else that you need uh, explained, uh, please feel free to uh, send a comment my way. Uh, you can see this video on YouTube. You can see this video on my website, ajbrutico.com. And if you want to add me to Twitter, it's twitter.com slash ajbrutico, A-J-B-R-U-T-I-C-O. Okay, guys, take it easy.